Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, elections in CD2. Also, more news on the cannabis fiasco and their big lies circulating about the gaming bill. House, you were lucky to live in a house. We used to live in one room, all 26 of us, no furniture, half the floor was missing. We're all huddled together in one corner for fear of falling. Oh, those lying liars and their lying lies. All this said much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, columnist and investigative reporter at APR. Welcome. Hi, guys. Hey, yo. Well, Josh, uh, they, they just may have a fix for three years worth of foul-ups by the Alabama Medical Cannabis Commission. Uh, Dr. Tim Nelson has filed a, a bill that uh, came out of committee this week that offers a fix by removing the commission <laughs> from the process, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah it's a, they figured out the problem, and the problem is us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's... No, yeah, it, it basically does that. It, it removes the Medical Cannabis Commission from making the basic decisions for licensing uh, on, on pr it, for the first, at least the first two steps. He has a three-step process, and the first two steps in which they qualify the applicants on the basic requirements of the law, which is all the the lawsuits really have been about, is the fact that they've not followed the basic requirements of the law, uh, and so they they're going to have the Securities Exchange Commission for the state of Alabama to ha to put together a panel of people. Uh, that are going to score each applicant based on simply the fact of whether or not they meet the requirements, whether they can be uh, ha have production running it up in 60 days, uh, you know, whether or not they have a performance bond, uh, some of the other basic requirements, whether or not they have a facility or it's just a dirt patch in the middle of a yeah. field somewhere. Uh, you know, all of those things are going to go into that. And then once they get those that whittle down the applicants to probably the two uh, that are going to fit those things, uh, then they're going to pass it along to the Medical Cannabis Commission. And they ha will have a, a set pre uh, list, a checklist that they're going to check off with everybody. Um, and then they'll they'll issue the five licenses. And, and, and Susan, the thing is, Josh is really not using a whole lot of hyperbole no, he's not. when he says two. There's only... A, a slight few that actually qualified, even the ones that were given medical cannabis licenses, most of them did not meet all the criteria. So now they're going to have to meet the criteria first before they can be awarded a license. Right. Only one out of the nine that were involved <coughs> in all of the previous attempts to give them a license had the $2 million performance bond. It's very explicit in the law that they must have it, not just have applied for it. A number of them, like Josh said, it was a dirt patch yeah. or it was a warehouse that they absolutely had no way of actually um, re leasing it, where the law says you must have a facility ready to operate and, and, and be productive in 60 days. These are very simple things that the commission totally ignored. And those are just the obvious ones. And this also, Josh, will probably alleviate their legal woes because this will, yeah. will alleviate all the uh, the dangling lawsuits out there because <laughs> they have a method now to actually follow the law rather than be lawbreakers like the commission has been. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Um, you know, uh, Will Somerville, uh, who's uh, the attorney uh, that, that's kind of been leading the charge on this, has uh, issued a statement uh, in support of the bill that, that Melson had put through uh, changing this process up. And uh, and again, I, I mean, I want to point out, uh, you, you know, I think 
I think whenever you have a number of lawsuits, uh, people kind of get confused by the process and, and maybe it, it turns some people off from time to time. Uh, and they think, well, this is just sour grapes from some people who didn't get a license. Well, uh, if you look at Melson's bill, like I, like we were saying, all the only thing that's in there is we want you to follow the law right. that's written. OK, right. that solves all of the lawsuits yeah. from mm -hmm. everybody. That's all they've asked for out of this entire thing is to say, look, you're not following. Here, here's eight examples of the way you didn't follow the law as it's written. And why, why do these people have this thing? You told us to do this stuff. We went out and spent millions of dollars to, to meet the laws. And then you ignored us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I don't understand, Susan, we got to move on after this. But why is it that these people over the Cannabis Commission who are hired and fired by the commission, why do they still have a job? I mean, there is no job in America where you could screw up this badly and still have a job. You can't even work for Boeing. No. No. I mean, if, if it were me after the first debacle, I would have cleaned house and fired everybody and started yeah. over. But they, you know, and I think this goes back to John McMillan's leadership style. And I love John Pieces. But he tries to over bend over backwards for everybody, regardless. If well, he bent what over the doing. wrong way this time. Yeah, well, I know. Anyway, but mm. at least maybe this will start to clean it up. Hey, I want to tell you about the lying liars and their lying lies. Here's another one. Wes Allen came out this week, our Secretary of State, and made a big deal over the fact that Joe Biden failed. He's going to fail mm -hmm. to qualify in Alabama because he will not meet the deadline when he has to have his paperwork in to the Secretary of State. And it was the world's biggest deal. They're going to miss it because oh, yeah. no one in the history of Alabama has ever missed this deadline. It's Except it, for Donald Trump. Right. Now, it, we're talking about four days here. We're talking about he needs to certify by August 15th. But the convention, the Democratic convention starts on August 19th. The problem is, Susan, that they just lied by omission know, and didn't say, oh, well, Trump had the same problem mm -hmm. in 2020 yep. and we passed a provisional law to the, make sure Trump was on the ballot. Alabama but they, legislature. I mean, John Wall came out and made a big deal about what a crook and how terrible Joe Biden was for this, but never said a word about the fact that they did it for Trump. But we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. It's time. Time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. Your home is your most valuable asset. But what if someone tried to steal it from you? Property fraud is one of the fastest growing areas of fraud in the country today. As a district attorney, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of property fraud. That's why I'm proud to support the Montgomery County Probate Court's REACT program. REACT is designed to protect your property and to give you peace of mind. By signing up, you'll receive an email notification if a document is filed against your property. This program is a game changer. It has the potential to prevent fraud and protect countless homeowners throughout Montgomery County. So don't wait. Sign up for REACT today and protect your home. Protect your home with REACT. Sign up today. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. The theme of this show, at least the first two segments, is the lying liars and the lying lies they tell. Okay, that's that's kind of the thing. And and around the state house, I get these calls from people all the time to say, hey, what's this going on? This one. And what they basically said is we've got out-of-state interest. We got illegal gaming interest in the state. Mm -hmm. And then we've got API 
and 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 uh, Alpha. Alpha Insurance, all telling various lies about the gaming bill, and then they say, "Well, and they're backed up in the media by the likes of this uh, fourteen ninety two or whatever it is, and, uh, the uh, the Johnny Johnson show or whatever. All these idiots." Who have a who have an agenda? Right. They One don't. Of them is funded they by don't API. care about the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, facts do not matter. It's about the agenda, and so the idiots all lie, and it confuses some of the people down in Montgomery, That's where they don't know do. <laughs> what their own bills say. I mean, for goodness' sake, Greg Reed, Senate President Pro Tem, who I have always been a friend of and a fan of, came out this week and said that the Senate worked hard, worked hard to pass their legislation, and that it was a good piece of legislation. If if, 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 if it would have been a Pinocchio movie, he'd have had an oak tree growing out of his nose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Greg Reed initially, on the House bill, was a soft yes meaning if it was leaning in that direction that he would vote yes for the bill, the House bill. But what they did, they, they worked so hard on the Senate bill that basically they just, you know, played paper dolls. They went in there with some scissors and just started cutting out pieces and rearranging them and came out with a completely different bill, which the House could not concur with. And I don't, I don't understand, and, and now it's stuck in the basket. They didn't, the first day that the House did a non-concurred with the Senate bill. The House went ahead and, and, and designated the members for the Joint Conference Committee, and the, and the Senate went silent and put the bill in the basket. And it hasn't come out since. That's been over a week ago. I don't understand that. I have known Greg Reed for over a decade. I've worked mm -hmm. with him for almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. And Josh, I have never seen this guy that we're seeing now. He has not had the total mm -hmm. transformation that... Uh, that Bradley Byrne had, where he, you know, the body snatchers got him. <laughs> no. But he's yeah. had a transformation, and I and I, I we'll get to this maybe in a minute. But they didn't pass a bill that was good. They didn't work hard on a bill. Chris yeah. Elliott, Sam Gavan, and a bunch of them screwed the bill up. Senator Reed went along with it, even though he voted for the, the, the basically the same bill twice. Right. So mm -hmm. what's the mm -hmm. deal? Well, I, you know, I don't know what his motivations are. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of speculation about what his motivations are and, and the, you know, whether or not there's some higher aspirations and some people that are pushing him to, to do certain things. Uh, but I, I can only tell you that he's been in the room since day one. Yeah. He's known everything that was in that bill. He knew every negotiation that was taking place. He knows all about what was happening. And still he sat on his hands, unlike Nathaniel Ledbetter, who, who – Got his group together. Yeah. Said, "This is what we're going to do. Everybody's in agreement, right? We know what's coming. We know how this is going to work. This was no. This bill was not a secret to anybody. The, the house had been working on it for thirteen months yeah. uh, before it ever got to the house floor. So, and the Senate were, folks were right there in the room, and there were a lot of promises made, and there's been a lot of bridges burned. I would say among leadership, and that includes Greg Reed and some of the folks over in the house who he made some promises to um, on, on how they were going to handle things. And you're right, it's." Uh, no, it's not a good bill. He let he let a, a handful of people go in and and basically kill this. This yeah. is what their objective was was to the kill, kill. all this nonsense all this. about we're trying to get a good bill and we're trying to do no, they weren't. No. What they were trying to do is put up just enough so it looked like they were going to give people a lottery vote. But in reality, all they were trying to do was send back a poison pill to the other side yeah. that they knew the House was not yeah. never going to be able to, to agree with, and they could throw their hands up and say, Well, we tried, but the house killed. Them. And well, before and, we go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and, and and here's here's something they may need to read. I don't know if they bother to read polls except for their for themselves, you know, what affects them. But public opinion, 89% of Alabama voters want the gambling issue on the ballot. 69 have gambled outside the state. That's money. Bye-bye. 74 support legalizing gambling, including casinos and lotteries. And 98% of the 69 of opponents agree that the need is a, there is a need for a ballot discussion here. Are you listening to the people? And, and the this people is, are telling you what you want, this, and you're turning a deaf ear. This is Republican. This is Republican and other voters. Yes, it is not just Democrats no, or not. any of that nonsense mm -hmm. that they're talking about. 
uh, affecting. And I tell you what, <clears throat> and I hate Josh. You're right about we don't know his motivation. But I tell you what, Senator Greg Reed has changed mm -hmm. since he hired Tim Howe. Yep. Now, for those of us who do not remember Tim Howe, Tim Howe was one of Mike Hubbard's lackeys. Mm -hmm. He testified against Mike Hubbard at the trial and admitted under oath that Mike Hubbard <coughs> funneled money through his business mm -hmm. back to himself. Yes. And that he took a 5% cut. Yes, he now, did. Now, this, uh, this guy may have had a come-to-Jesus moment, but I'm telling you, his, his whole demeanor and running attitude has changed. And we hear that it's because he wants higher office and he's been told that he's too moderate. I am telling you that it's coming out of Tim Howe's mouth. I have no doubt about it. Because this, this Greg Reed that we're seeing right now, I don't recognize him. No. I have been a fan of his, loved him to death. I mean, I've hugged his name in his office. I've got his gospel album in my CD collection. I don't know who this is. Yeah. I and mean, the, Josh, only, the only thing that has changed here is Tim Howe. I'm not saying that that's what's doing it, but, I, you know, sometimes you get a cause and effect there, right? Yeah. And, you know, I don't know either. Um, and, and you know, I don't, I don't know Tim Howe. And, and you know, and for that matter, I don't really know Greg Reed that well. Uh, but, you know, I know that, that, that you're right. There's been a shift in the, in the demeanor and the way that he handles things. And, uh, and, it, and it, you watch him now, and it's an unnatural uh, sort of stance, you know, a persona that he's yeah, putting is. forth, mm -hmm. and, and you can kind of tell that it's it's not something that he's necessarily comfortable right. with. But that that aside, you know, what they've done with this bill, uh, I, I want to you know to just focus people and tell them, you know, what are the Senate bill that's so great has the same number of casinos in it as the House bill, but you lose seven hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah, in annual revenue. Yeah. I, what you know, if it's that great, where's the seven hundred million, guys? Yeah. Hey, before we get out of this segment, I want to put up a picture of Stan McDonald, one of the 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 great uh, pieces of uh, careful wonderfulness <laughs> that our state has produced. He uh, had to resign from the Ethics Commission this week because he admitted to breaking the law. He has been Felony a, breaking the law. He's been an advocate for Tommy Tuberville and for Mo Magamo, not Mo Brooks. <laughs> And that kind of idiots, that's who he is. Another one of those idiots who knows nothing about governing. Knows nothing about ethics. how to try to do whatever they want to do because they are somebody. Yeah, well, he tried to say, well, he didn't understand that this was illegal. It was a felony for him to give to these campaigns. If you don't understand ethics, you don't need to be on the ethics commission. There you go. We're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. Today, Montgomery is a safer city. It's time to shift the narrative and take control of our future. We're reopening community centers, remediating blight, and revitalizing neighborhoods across the city. And we're unleashing new opportunities. Over the past year, companies have invested a record-setting $2 billion in Montgomery and created 2,000 jobs. This is a new Montgomery. And together, we're reimagining the possibilities. It's time. Time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down. Be careful. Care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We've got an election come up uh, very, this, this week uh, mm -hmm. in uh, the Congressional District 2, uh, down around the Mobile area of the state. 
Caroline Dobson versus Dick Brubaker in the Republican uh, primary runoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's going to be a very uh, interesting race to watch. Uh, two wealthy individuals hammering away at each other. And, and uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Dobson has gone fairly negative on uh, Mr. Brubaker, and, to say the least. And that's what happens when you're running behind. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to go a little negative. But, Josh, you watched the, uh, the debates between the two, and I think you, you summarized it by saying that they, they went after every red meat issue. But that is really what... Republican voters uh, want to talk about these days, I think. Yeah, I, you know, I uh, I wanted to gouge my eyes out and, and, and my ears, uh, you know, uh, just a few minutes into it, uh, after uh, particularly after I heard uh, Ms. Dobson uh, advocate for basically a rewrite of the Constitution and, and kicking out American citizens. Uh, so uh, because uh, they were the children of immigrants. But yeah, it, it, they did. They went after pretty much every every red meat issue that you could imagine, from calling the border an invasion to you know artificial intelligence and uh, transgender issues and rights. And uh, I mean, it just was a, a, a nonstop smorgasbord of, of things that really have no effect on the average Alabamian. Uh, you know, and and I wish people would pay a little more attention to that and, and pay pay more attention to, hey, look, the, the things that we, we're we talking about every night at our house, they're not talking about. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I think it's interesting, when, especially when they go after immigration and talk about, you know, the people at the border and blah, 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 blah. And Susan, I wonder if, if they realize that the chicken that they eat the houses that are being built in their neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, probably the, the clothes, a lot of the clothes, all these things are services and jobs that employ primarily people that come here from South America, uh, you know, from Mexico, from Guatemala, from uh, those other places. And like including the, the t tomatoes they eat on their hamburgers from Burger King yeah. and McDonald's. Yeah. They're supplied by uh, Straight Mountain up here, where they employ, uh, you know, immigrants that have come across the border to seek better life. Yeah. I'm not going out in 120-degree weather and picking tomatoes in the middle of a field. Well, and, and if you've ever been in a chicken plant or a slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. anywhere, uh, but especially in Alabama, these are jobs mm -hmm. that most white folks won't do. Right. They won't do it. Right. And and these, these people come here seeking a better life for their family. And they're willing to do the jobs that most Americans won't do, Josh. And they and, and the thing that they mm -hmm. they're not saying oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah, how yeah, it increases yeah, our economy. The, I'm sorry, Josh. Yeah, the yeah, the uh, I think the 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 end of the sentence is if you've ever been in a slaughterhouse in Alabama, the you want to get out of the slaughterhouse. Yeah, I mean, yeah you do. A, you yeah. know, I, yeah, and it's no, you're right. It, you know, if you told the story uh, of of people who have taken their children and, and walked thousands of miles uh, because they were in fear of their lives and their children's lives from gangs and crime yeah. uh, and and you know and a poor government, and they marched them to a place where they all they wanted was freedom and the and the opportunity to work hard and create a living for themselves, and you put a white face on that story. It's a it's a movie of the week. Oh yeah, week. yeah, yeah. All right, but not but you pay put it with a brown face, and it's an invasion at the border yeah. that we have to be afraid of. All right, and, and that's that's what troubles me. That ninety nine percent of the folks that are coming across the border down there, or that show up to the border, have a desperate story, and all they want are the freedoms and and th and opportunities that what? we have in this country. Yeah, and, and I you know. I think we're a better country for having them. Well, it, and, and, and it's, sh it's shown in, in indices, economic indices, that these migrant workers are actually good for our economy. It's been it's been proven over and over that they actually boost yeah. the U.S. economy but by being here. It, it, it's an issue that while we just had one of the best fixes in a generation, got rejected by Republicans, mm -hmm. because they don't really want to fix the border. No, they don't. Because then you have nothing to argue about. But anyway, it's a good talking point, uh, you know. Uh, it's still not Alabama-based. It, it, it's not Alabama-based. We, Which you is know, what that should we be. We don't have a border here. We're not being invaded. 
You know, you go to the places where migrants have settled in Alabama and 99% of them, the folks that live there are happy to have them. Mm -hmm. I will want to move on to uh, Shamari Figures and 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 uh, Anthony Daniels' uh, uh, debate because Josh, they just almost agreed on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, they did uh, almost agree on everything. It was it was a very cordial, nice debate with uh, with each of them kind of going back and forth and uh, you know sa saying uh, you know <coughs> we we agree and uh, you know I, I thought there were some very good ideas that came out of it. They were uh, they were focused on the issues uh, that uh, that really were that dominate this state in terms of health care um, and, and you know and even. Even the broader issues of, of immigration, they tend to take a more Alabama focused approach to those issues. And, um, you know, and I think that's I, I don't again, I know it's Democrats and Democrats have, a, you know, have, uh, it's, a, it's a dirty word in Alabama or whatever. But uh, I mean, if you listen to these two debates, I don't know how you're, if you live in this state that you don't come away thinking, I wish these other people would talk about it in these terms, mm -hmm. even if they're not solving it in these ways, at least bring it back home to us here and tell me how you're going to make these issues or, or work at these issues from an Alabama based solutions problem. And, you know, and, and Anthony Daniels, what he's done in, in, you know, over the course of his 10 years in the legislature, I think that that lends itself to that uh, type of problem sure. solving sure. that he does here. He's he's a smart guy who's done a lot of really good things. Shamari Figures carried himself very very well during the during the debate. I thought he he really did well. Um, and and listen, I I I personally, I, you know, I've said before, I like Anthony Daniels. I identify him more so as as a candidate than anybody else. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm certain that 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 I would agree with Shamari Figures on on a lot of issues. Well, and we got to get out of here, but I do want to say one thing. Dick Bray Brubaker is no fool. No. He is a smart guy. Uh, Caroline Dobson is no fool. Uh, these other two men certainly are not. No. But what it is is they are trying to win a primary where you have to appeal to the, the lowest de common denominator. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the Repub Democratic side, there's pretty much vast agreement. On the Republican side, it could not be more divided. But we're going to have to leave it there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.